Hello, my name is Dr. Sandra Rios, and my purpose today is to give you a brief explanation about how to do Assignment 3, Overview of the Technical Writing Process. Most people, when they write, tend to write intuitively. In other words, they write to fulfill their own personal needs. They have no conscious knowledge of what the writing process is or how to take advantage of it in order to produce more effective, user-friendly pieces of writing. However, as a professional, when you are writing on the job, you need to, as a professional, have a conscious understanding of what the writing process is and how to use it best to accomplish your purpose for writing. Assignment number three is a review of the writing process as much as it is an overview of the technical writing process. I assume that at some point in the past you have been presented with the process approach to writing and have had an explanation given to you about how this process works. The fact of the matter is though that many times even though you might have been explained the process approach to writing you might not remember exactly what the steps or stages are and how to take advantage of them to create more effective pieces of writing. The whole basis to assignment number three is the fact that writing can be conceptualized as a process that involves a series of steps. And assignment three requires you to decide at which stage or step in the writing process you will perform a series of actions that are listed in a to-do list. Look at the, the instructions to assignment three and you'll see that there is a list of actions. Each one of these 20 items starts with an action verb. You've been given the background information, which is that you need to write a or create a brochure as a for a training program at your company. Now, how are you going to go about taking these 20 actions and deciding what to do and when to do them? I have presented you also with the different stages or steps in the writing process. For example, most, not most, but every time you write, you need to have a subject or topic that you're writing about. You have an audience, whether you, if it's an oral presentation, you will have somebody who's listening. If you're writing, you're going to have a reader. Every piece of technical writing will have a purpose, and the purposes are usually to explain or inform or to argue or persuade. At some point you need to sit down at a computer, at a table with a paper and a pen, and you need to start drafting your writing. You also need to arrange or organize the writing that you drafted. There's a process of revision or shaping where you go back and you look at what you wrote and you make sure that the, organized, the information you provided and the way you revised or you shaped your writing is adequate or suitable for achieving your purpose for writing. Finally, you need to at some point edit or proofread. Usually this is something that is done at the very end of the writing process, eliminating all kinds of spelling, grammatical, lexical, and uh, syntactic mistakes and preparing that final draft to be presented to your audience. I want to mention that the final product, even though it seems to be the last thing on the list, is often the very first thing on the list of the writing process. In other words, knowing what your final product is going to look like or how, it, how the information that you're presenting to the, uh, the, uh, your audience is going to be uh, Pre, uh, created a book, a brochure, a website, 
a letter, a memo, all of these considerations will affect how you go about developing or choosing your subject or how you go about narrowing your subject to your topic, how your audience is going to use the product. So the final product is often very important to knowing what the final product does. It will affect all the other parts of the writing process. The fact of the matter is that even though I put all these different steps or stages in a linear sequence with subject at the top and final product at the bottom does not mean that they are not all equally important or that you might find some parts of the uh, or steps or stages of the writing process to be more important at some parts at some times at other parts. So so let's look at the assignment. Look at, at the written assignment, look at the instructions, and you'll see that I have created a fictitious uh, situation in which you have to imagine that you are working for a company and you're being asked to create some sort of a brochure in which you orient new employees as to policies of the company. Uh, there is a to-do list. In other words, you've been given this responsibility and you've done some brainstorming. You say, okay, well, these are all the different things that I need to do in order to create this brochure. And I've created a similar situation with a very simple everyday task, which is going shopping. So for example, imagine that you need to go to the mall to do a series of errands. In other words, you have certain things you need to go either to the mall or downtown or to uh, the town center, for example. And you make a list so that you don't forget what it is that you have to do. So here's your to-do list. When you go to the mall, you need to pay the water bill, you need to buy milk, you need to get batteries for a TV, remote control, you need to buy dog food, pick up medication, pay car loan. All of these are items that have been placed on this list, but not in any particular order. You just put them there as you as they came to mind. So basically the question though is what is how are you going to accomplish your objective of carrying out these nine actions? Are you going to first go to the bank, for example, and pay the water bill, then go to the supermarket, and then get the batteries, but um, buy dog food, and then go back to the bank, for example, to pick up the car loan, uh, to pay the car loan, uh, cash a check, buy something. In other words, the best way to organize your time would be to classify or to group these actions so that you, when you go to the bank, you, for instance, pay the water bill, you uh, pay the car loan, you get you cash the check, you get some money from the ATM, all at the same time. In other words, you, you take these nine actions and you, you classify them or you put them together in one um, part of the list. And then everything you have to do at the supermarket, you also classify as go to the supermarket, the pharmacy, okay? So that you should have a list that's organized according to the location that you have to go to in order to carry out the task. Now I ask you to create a table. Since there are 20 items, um, I ask you to create a table in which you would get something that looks so similar to this. In other words, but instead of bank, you might have subject audience. So you have to look at the to-do list and think of all the things that you have to do that have to do with your subject or your audience. In your to-do list, you have things that have to do with audience. You have actions that you have to take that have to do with um, with uh, determined drafting or researching, doing research, okay, which is often part of drafting. You have to do things that have to do with um, the final product. Okay, so each one of these um, different actions can be classified on that to-do list under one of the stages of the of the, the writing process. Once you've num you've gotten your table and you've classified all the different actions in one under you know one heading or the other, you can then proceed to make an outline. And here is how an outline would look. I mean, I think the outline is much more practical 
than this chart, but I wanted just to get you to go step by step. First doing the outline, I mean the chart, the table with putting the different numbers, and then creating the outline. The f I do want to mention that there are um, certain actions that might take place under more than one stage of the writing process, but I just want you to choose where are you going to do it. Just So if you have to go to, maybe you could buy a milk at the pharmacy, maybe it's at Walgreens, you can buy milk, but you're just going to, you're not going to buy milk at both Walgreens and the supermarket, you're just going to buy milk at the supermarket, okay? So don't put, you know, just put where you're going to do that action once. Okay, so here's your outline, okay? An outline is more practical, it's more coherent and easy to understand. So here you have what you're going to do at the bank, what you're going to do with the pharmacy, what you're going to do at the supermarket. So do the same thing with the to-do list in the brochure. Decide what each one of those items that have to do with the writing process that you're going to carry out in, other, in order to create the brochure, where do they go in the, you know, which stage would you carry out each one of those actions, all right? So you should have, as a final product, uh, two items. You should have a table with the numbers that correspond to each one of the actions and an outline. Okay, don't forget to include an introduction and a conclusion to your assignment. The body should be the table and the outline. Okay, so instead of creating a shopping list that where you have a list of tasks that need to be performed, in this assignment you're actually going to organize the different actions or steps you're going to take in order to create a piece of technical writing. I hope you understood this.